G'day, Rob from Wookie Mount Tackle. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to do your own DIY whiting rigs. These rigs are fantastic on the hip pocket because it won't cost you much to get the components that you need to build your own rigs. And not only that, once you've got those components, you can make multiple rigs. You'll find that this is a cost effective way of building your own rigs. One of the other benefits is that you can make them to your own specifications. If you're like me and you're a keen angler and you want to learn more about how to tie certain rigs, or you're a beginner, you don't know where to start, well, this video is for you. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe because we create content like this on a weekly basis. Make sure you stay to the end of this video as we'll be covering a bonus variation of a pattern Oster rig. You don't want to miss that. We'll be covering two different styles of rig today. Firstly, the simple running sinker, and secondly, the slightly harder pattern Oster rig. Get down to your local tackle shop and collect yourself the following components. Grab yourself some red beads, uh, don't be too fussy about the size but make sure it's proportionate to the rig that you're building. The other thing you'll need is some red tubing. Grab some bomb sinkers and some ball sinkers as well. Pick yourself up some long shank hooks or you could even go with some circle hooks. The last component you need to complete these rigs will be some fluorocarbon leader. To make the simple running sinker rig for whiting, you'll need the following items. You'll need some small swivels, some fluorocarbon leader, some beads and some tubing, and you'll want some size six long shank hooks, size four, whatever suits you. An alternative to the long shank hook is circle hooks. Now the great thing about circle hooks wow. is the angler to fish multiple rods um, off the kayak or off a boat or off land based because you don't actually have to hook the fish themselves. The circle hooks do all the work for you. Where if you're using a long shank, you've got to wait for the fish to bite and you've got to strike the fish, which means you can only sort of fish one rod. You don't need a whole lot of items. You don't need a whole lot of skill to be able to make these ones yourself. I like to make my running sinker rig with about a 50 centimeter fluorocarbon leader uh, and about a two centimeter piece of red tubing. I'm also going to use this braid. Uh, it's a little thin, it's an eight pound braid, but it's blue and we're hoping that you can see that better than using the fluorocarbon leader. But obviously we would normally use the fluorocarbon leader because it's invisible in the water uh, to the fish where the, the braid obviously isn't, this is normally used for a, a main line. However, just for the purpose of this, we're going to use this because it's a little bit easier to see. So you need about 50 centimetres of litre. The first thing you want to do is tie your swivel. Yeah. So we're just going to use a blood knot. If you need a hand with knots, um, suggest that you have a look at this book here. Uh, this is Jeff Wilson's waterproof book, Basic Fishing Knots. Yeah, so as I said, if you need a hand with fishing knots, just uh, jump onto our YouTube channel. We've got plenty of knot demonstrations for you to have a look at there. Now, just for your convenience, on the right hand part of the screen, you can see there that um, we're using Builder's Cable to. Uh, demonstrate uh, a little bit closer how to tie a blood knot. Pull that tight. Trim off your tag. That's your first step. Second step is we want to grab a bead and a bit of Lumo tubing, or red tubing in this case. I like to use about that length there. 
give it a trim. Yeah, thread your bead on. Thread your tubing on. Okay, pretty simple. Then what we're gonna do is grab one of these size six Okay, what we're going to do is grab one of these size 6 hooks, a little long shank. These hooks are great for holding worms because they'll, obviously they're long shank. They're great for holding pippies and, um, pippies and squid and are also really good for holding bass yabbies as well, which are some of my favourite baits for whiting. My all time favourite bait for whiting is bass yabbies, uh, if you can get them live. And then second from that will be uh, pippies and worms, and then squid. So like before, I'm just going to tie a, a blood knot. Give that a twist, come through the eye, make that a loop. Once it comes into a loop, push it back through that loop. Always lubricate your knots. Okay, that's it. And trim your tag. Okay, don't mind that. And then all you gotta do here is run your leader down all you got to do is run your tubing down to your hook and that is your rig pretty much completed now we've got to work on the running sinker so this being your main line connect it to your fishing rod before you tie that sinker back on you thread your sinker on and again tie another knot to the swivel and again we're just going to do quickly do a blood knot or a half blood knot I like to go around about four times through the loop back through the next loop at the top to finish it off You'll find braid a little bit harder to tie than than mono. There we go. And pull that tight. Clip off your tag. And there we have it. It's your running sinker. Okay, here's the basic measurements of the uh, pattern oster rig. Let's get started on the pattern oster. So. I like to do about 80 centimeters of fluorocarbon leader. As I said before, we're just going to use builder's cable here to make it easier for you. And I do my droppers, dropper loops on the pattern officer about 15 centimeters each. So I've cut that as well in builder's cable so you can see the two different variations of color. So what we're going to do is first off, we're going to start by putting a loop in the bottom of the line. Okay. Now, there's many ways to do this, but this is the way I do it. Put a loop in the bottom of the line, go around, come back through the other loop there, then go back in a second time. And you can do this loop as big as you want it, and this is to hold your sinker. Okay, and then just pull it tight, and that will create a, a loop for your sinker. So, what we use in this case. Is we use bomb sinkers so again depending on on um, how strong your currents are but you know when you're fishing for whiting the best thing you can do is try and go as light as possible so what you need to do is pinch your loop that you've just made you now because it's builders cable it's a bit thicker than normal push that through the loop of the bomb sinker 
come around the bottom of the bomb sinker with the loop and then pull it back up to the top and that's it. So that's interchangeable. So if it get, the tide does get heavier, well, essentially all you need to do is, is exactly that in reverse, is just push that through and then pull it over back over the top and pull that out and that will release the sinker and you can just simply put on a heavier sinker to suit the current at the time. Okay, but for per this purpose, we'll just leave it at that. So that's the start of our rig. Okay, so now the reason I like to use a shorter, um, shorter dropper is because a lot of the time, um, some of the pre-made ones, they tend to have them a bit long and they will tangle up. So I like to keep it a bit short. Now, once you've got your sinker on, you know bas basically where you don't want your hook to be. So we usually pull that up there a little bit so that it makes sure that it's not gonna, when the hook is down, it will not tangle up with the sinker. So that's our starting point there. So all you need to do is pinch that and push it up like a like a mountain. Okay, push it up like a mountain and let it fold over itself so it creates a loop. Okay, pinch the loop and then what you want to do is bring the line back through that loop. Drag the sinker. The sinker makes it easier when the sinker's on to do this. And then do that again. Back through. Okay, pull that back through. There we go, so that's twice. I like to do mine three times. Okay. There we go, and then go, go back through three times. Now all we need to do is pull the, two, the all four tab ends and it will formulate the knot. Okay, there's your knot there. So you'll end up with something like that. So all you need to do then is grab your trusty scissors, cut away the tab end and there's your first dropper. Okay, and you can see there it's not gonna it's not gonna get tagged up, it's not gonna get tangled up um, on the sinker. So then we go into the second one. Now we're gonna make sure that that doesn't tangle up with the other hook. So we make sure we give that plenty of space. But also you don't want it um, too close to your swivel at the top here as well. So I like to just get it so it's just a little bit above. So I just like to measure it from that knot and then come up a couple of centimeters and then start it from there. So remember, pinch it, push it up, push the two up together like a hump, fold over itself to make a loop, pinch your loop. Remember, make your loop big enough that you can work with. Now in this case, oh, the string's a bit too So again, same as before, you're pulling all, you're pulling the other two strings through, and you're doing that three times. Okay. Push that through. Now I'm just going to do it twice, just make speed this up a bit but you need to do it three times to make sure that knot's nice and strong. So again, we've just got the tab end cut off. And here we go, nice short dropper. Now, it's up to you. you if you may like uh, a longer dropper, and, and in cases when there's um, a strong tide, it is, it is more beneficial to use a longer dropper because the longer the dropper, the less vibration in the line, the more fish you'll catch. But in this case, I like to keep mine fairly short. So basically we've got our two droppers now. So all we wanna do is add our hooks. Now I'm gonna add a couple of little circle hooks here because um, this will be just a bit easier for me to do given the fact that the long shank hooks have got such a fine, small hole and it'll be very difficult for me to 
push this builder's cable through. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to use this, I think it was a 2.0 circle hook, which are great to use on a pattern oster. And as I said earlier, um, the reason that you want to use a pattern oster um, with circle hooks is that it allows you to, to fish multiple rods. One, two, three. Back through that hole, back through that hole, pull that through, tighten down, cut away your tab. Okay, now we have two droppers with circle hooks. Now, obviously, with widening, you would definitely use smaller circle hooks. Um, these are a size 2.0, I think they were, a 3.0. So definitely use a nice small circle hook. The last thing to do to finish off your rig here is tie on your swivel. And again, builder's cable is difficult to tie with, but easy for you guys to see what I'm doing. Okay, so then we want to go one, two, three, back through the eye okay. and then back through that eye there and tighten down and trim away your tag and there you have your pattern oster rig okay two droppers good length part so they don't get tangled and it's just as simple as that. Here's the bonus rig. So we just made up a little pattern oster here. So swivel, swivel at the top, running down to first dropper, then into a second dropper, and then down to a bomb sinker. So the bonus, what you can do here is um, you can use flasher rigs. These ones here are a UV rig. And these are DIY hooks. Okay, so what these are all about are basically they've got UV material along with standard flasher material. So you can see the silver and the sort of black material are standard flasher, and the other material is UV. So you charge it up with a UV torch, um, and they will glow in the dark and give you extra extra um, extra light so you use a torch like this a UV torch or any torch you can light them up even with a um, even with a iPhone and this is the bonus is that you can just buy these uh, anywhere BCF or any of those sort of Kmart shops and um, let's use the orange oh no let's go with the uh, the yellow lumo on this one so we'll take two of those off basically what you do is you just tie these on as you would um, the long shank or these are a circle a size 4 circle so they're nice and small and these are really dynamite on King George whiting whiting in general and especially flathead too they're really really good on flathead these uv rigs one two i'm just doing a blood knot three four let's tie that on through that loop as you've seen me do several times now in this tutorial and then back through that alt loop there pull it tight look down cut off your tab and that is your bonus rig. The other really good thing here is that, um, as you can see, this full rig um, is that with the DIY rigs, you can interchange those colors. So you can run one with the yellow, and you might run one with the orange and see which one's working, working best. Now, whiting tend to do, whiting do tend to love red. So it's a good idea to stick with the red. So there's a bonus rig for you that you can turn your standard Pat Noster into a double flasher rig as well. Here's another good idea as well, is once you've actually made these rigs up, uh, especially when you're kayak fishing, it doesn't matter even if you're on a boat, 
um, it's great to make these up but how do you store them so if you buy these little pieces of cardboard you can get from PCF you can get them from Kmart I think as well um, these are fantastic for storing rigs you just slot them in like so and then run your rig around tuck your hook in you can put these in your pocket you won't get um, pricked by your hook or anything pretty good they're a great invention great idea you can get probably two I used to get about two rigs on each of these and that's the way that I store them so then I, before I go out on the trip you can um, basically set up multiple rigs so you're ready to go so, so if you do get a bust off or you get a tangle whatever it might be you're ready to go pretty quickly um, when you've got these pre-made rigs that you've done yourself DIY style there you have it if you got something out of this video don't forget to give us a thumbs up. okay thanks for watching if you've got a different variation of a whiting rig that you'd like to share with our community feel free to comment in the comments below